Welcome to the Richmond Hill Heritage Center, where we've got a story to tell. And we have a great story to tell with Museums of the Streets, a unique museum experience. Usually you visualize a museum as a large institutional building with artifacts, a maze of galleries, and long straight corridors. Richmond Hill's Museum of the Streets takes away the four walls of the traditional museum and opens up the heritage of the city for all, providing both the obvious and sometimes not so obvious signposts of our fascinating past. We have designed museums of the streets so that you can explore as much or as little as you wish. Take the journey at your own pace, wherever you like, whenever you like. The Richmond Hill Museum is always open and there is no admission charge. Join us for a visit to some of our favorite spots on this journey of discovery. Don't forget to pick up our Museums of the Streets booklet so that you can enjoy the city's history in the comfort of your own home. Built in 1840, the Amos Raid House is located within an established residential area of the old village of Richmond Hill. Abraham Wright, a United Empire loyalist, relocated to Toronto in 1815 prior to the birth of his son, Amos Wright, at Augusta near Brockville, Ontario. Amos was a prominent member of the community and served as chairman of the Board of Trustees, Richmond Hill Grammar School, and presided at meetings of the Richmond Hill Library and the Mechanics Institute. Amos was also the first town reeve of Markham Township in 1850. He was the reform member for the riding of East York from 1851 to Confederation in 1867. He served as a member of Parliament for the West York between 1867 and 1871. During Wright's political career, he fought twice for the incorporation of Richmond Hill as a village, which was just a transit point between York, now Toronto, and Newmarket, and he succeeded in 1872. The house was converted into a museum and opened its door to the public in October 1997 with the goal of preserving and presenting the history of Richmond Hill. The property is designated under the Ontario Heritage Act for its architectural and historical significance. The Amos Wright House is a well-preserved example of an Ontario Regency cottage and was originally part of a 190-acre farm lot granted to Andre Davison in 1802. The land went through a series of owners until Amos Wright purchased the farm in 1832. The property was owned by the Lamb family, purchased by Thomas B. Lamb in 1941 for over 50 years until the city of Richmond Hill acquired it in 1989. The Lambs donated their cranberry glass hanging lamp, which still lights the central hallway in the house. It was definitely coming up roses in Richmond Hill. In 1911, William Lawrence bought John Palmer's farm for $13,000 as the site of his new greenhouses. The following year, he was producing cut roses for his retail shops in Toronto. William Lawrence really started things for Richmond Hill with his roses. They won prizes at flower shows and delegations of horticulturalists came to town. When Lawrence started an extensive mail order business that stretched beyond the province, Richmond Hill was forever associated with roses. Lawrence also introduced John Dunlop, a rival florist from Toronto and former president of the Canadian Horticultural Society, to the Village Council in 1913. John Dunlop had a well-established operation in Toronto consisting of wholesale and retail outlets. Similar to Lawrence, Dunlop was looking for more space near the city. He moved his operations to Richmond Hill after the Village Council agreed to a tax break. In August 1913, he had two operational greenhouses and six more planned. 
Dunlop's roses quickly won acclaim. In March 1914, when 50 of his Richmond roses were awarded first prize at the International Rose Show in New York City. Richmond Hill was so desirable for the industry, H.J. Mills at the same time moved north from Toronto looking for more space. He set up H.J. Mills Limited and built two greenhouses, exclusively growing roses. Mills won top prizes at the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair in Toronto. As the rose growing industry continued to prosper, it became a more distinct part of Richmond Hill's identity and was eventually written into the village's motto. In 1919, Council asked local carriage builder and artist William Ashford Wright to design a crest for its official stationery and for two large signs erected at each end of the village, which proclaimed Richmond Hill as Toronto's highest and healthiest suburb. Wright took his design from the top of the coat of arms of the fourth Duke of Richmond. Wright also borrowed the Duke's motto, On la rose, j'ai fleuri which freely translates as, like the rose, I bloom. I bloom as the rose, or in the rose, I flourish, which indeed the city has. It's been several decades since the rousing cry of the train conductor has been heard in Richmond Hill. However, the railway line remains, and so does the Richmond Hill Railway Station, but not at its original location. It was moved to Richmond Green in 1979. Here we are to tell the story of Richmond Hill's Age of Steam. In Victorian Ontario, the railway was the ticket to economic prosperity and growth. Railway lines were a boon to local industries, businesses and farmers, providing an efficient link to markets and suppliers across Ontario. When the first steam railway was built in 1853, the line skirted Richmond Hill, running through the village of Maple to the west. When the first steam railway was built in 1853, the line skirted Richmond Hill, running through the village of Maple to the west. This put Richmond Hill at a distinct disadvantage, leading to a stagnation in industrial growth in the late 1800s. The local economy didn't rebound until 1896 with the arrival of the Metropolitan Radio Railway on Young Street, providing a reliable link for the village with urban, industrial and commercial activity. But just imagine the buzz of conversation at the village post office in the fall of 1906, when the new railway line was about to open up to the east of Richmond Hill. The arrival of the James Bay Railway promised apparent unlimited growth. The James Bay Railway Company received its charter in 1895. It was the first Ontario project of well-known railway promoters, Mackenzie and Mann, who later controlled the Toronto and York Radio Railway, the successor to the Metropolitan Railway. In 1923, the line became part of the Canadian National Railways and remain so today. The new station in the then fashionable Queen Anne revival style was completed in August 1906. Although Richmond Hill Railway Station clearly played a significant role in the economic development of the community, it also became an important center for the youth social development. This was thanks to station agent YB Tracy who worked at this station from 1911 through to 1953. Richmond Hill was honored with a royal visit in 1939 when King George VI and Queen Elizabeth passed through Richmond Hill on a return trip from the Canadian West. The train slowed down to allow the crowd of onlookers to see their majesties. Unfortunately, it did not slow down enough to allow a bouquet to be presented by little Margaret Scott. Instead, the flowers were tossed to Queen Elizabeth. However, they missed their mark. Souvenir hunters gathered keepsakes from the fallen bouquet. The end of an era came in 1968. Declining business compelled the CNR to designate the Richmond Hill Railway Station for closure. 
The future of the old station was in question until the newly formed Local Architectural Conservation Advisory Committee spearheaded a preservation campaign leading to the relocation of the station to Richmond Green Park. Welcome to Town Park. In the early 1880s, community spirit was running high in Richmond Hill. The village was experiencing an unprecedented building boom. Blushing with confidence in Richmond Hill's future, the community felt it was time to establish a park worthy of this progressive York County village. Council accepted John Palmer's offer of four and a half acres in exchange for an old park site and $180 cash. Only a few weeks after this, the park was seeded and fenced. A grandstand was built by a citizens committee and soon the town park was home to the Young Canadians Lacrosse Team and the Richmond Hill and Young Street Agricultural Society Spring Fair. In 1889 came another major improvement, the construction of a spacious agricultural hall and skating rink. The space provided seating for 1,000 people. Not bad for small town Ontario Village. The new hall became very popular featuring a band concert to celebrate Queen Victoria's birthday, skating parties with accompanying music from the village band, an annual spring fair, auction sales, and later a recruiting station for the First World War. The spring fair, the highlight of your year, and for the village, a long-standing tradition in small town Ontario. Not long after the town park was established in 1885, the Spring Fair moved to this location where it would remain for a hundred years. As Richmond Hill grew beyond its historic boundaries, a new, larger fairground was established on the former Boynton Farm at Elgin Mills Road East and Leslie Street. Richmond Hill had grown significantly since the arena's construction in 1923, and with the growth came demands for increased recreational space. In 1967, an additional arena was built beside the earlier building to help keep up with the needs of the ever-expanding town. The arena complex was improved once again in 1982 and renamed the Elgin Barrel Arena Complex after a longtime member of the Arena Association who served as chairman during the arena's remodeling. The Richmond Hill Sports Hall of Fame is located on the second floor of Elgin Barrel Arena. The Sports Hall of Fame features exhibits and photos of the inductees. The city recognizes athletes, teams, officials, and sports builders who have shaped the sports community in Richmond Hill. Richmond Hill is more than just a place name. It also describes a local geographical feature. As you approach the historic village core from the south, rising before you is a tree-covered dome, punctuated by three historic church spires. This is the hill in Richmond Hill, the community's distinctive skyline. Over 200 years ago, Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe's military road from the town of York, now Toronto, to Holland Landing was the key that opened up the northern part of York County for settlement. French aristocrats, United Empire loyalists, and other American immigrants were the first of the European settlers to take up land grants on either side of Young Street in the mid to late 1790s but they weren't the first people to call the hill home. 300 years before the construction of Young Street, a Huron village stood on the east bank of the Don River where it crosses present day Major Mackenzie Drive. The Boyle Atkinson archeological site, a short distance to the west of the intersection of Young and Major Mackenzie, tells the story of a community of native people living in a cluster of longhouses from about 1450 to 1500 AD. Artifacts discovered by the archaeological team that excavated the site in 1984 included numerous fragments of decorated clay pots, clay smoking pipes, stone tools, arrowheads, and stone and shell beads. At what is now the intersection of Young Street and Major Mackenzie Drive, Miles built an inn and a store. Abner's son James became the local justice of the peace. 
James Miles was a member of the Book Society, a generous man by nature, and he shared his collection of books with interested friends and neighbors. It is therefore particularly fitting that his home is now the site of Richmond Hill's Central Library. This spacious and bright library opened its doors in 1993. The present facility includes a local history room where a fascinating collection of early photographs, historical documents, and family records are housed. Another landmark on the hill is the Lois Hansi Aquatic Centre, otherwise known as the Wave Pool. This popular recreation facility was opened in 1991. It features the hot swirl pool, a larger pool with wave action and simulated beach. The centre is named for Lois Hansi, a longtime member of Council of Richmond Hill and York Region. In the early 1960s, Hansi's interest in aquatics led her to spearhead the local effort to establish the town's first public swimming pool. The present site of the M.L. McConaughey Centre has been the location of an institution of learning since 1811, when James Miles founded a Sunday school in a deserted settlement duty house on his property. Lot 46, Concession 1, Vaughan Township. In 1820, Mr. Miles donated this land for school use. The first school was built of logs and was only 800 square feet. It was constructed in a small clearing about 50 feet south of the present McConaughey Centre site. The first schoolmaster was Benjamin Bernard from Surrey, England. He was paid $12 a quarter year and was boarded around for two week periods with each student's family. Each family also had to provide a half cord of wood for the school's stove. In 1847, a one-room brick building, the Common School, replaced the log structure. In 1853, a grammar school was built. And in 1873, a high school was constructed in the front of the Common School. The high school burned down in 1876 and was later rebuilt at the north end of the village at 10222 Young Street. The same structure is known today as the Richmond Hill Centre for the Performing Arts. The Common and Grammar Schools were demolished in 1914 and on March 15, 1915, the Richmond Hill Public School, a six-room brick structure, was formally open on its present site. The school was designed and built by two local men, John Innes and William Graham. Innes, an architect, served as a trustee on a school board and offered his services for free. Graham was an active builder in Richmond Hill during the first quarter of the 20th century. Other projects by Graham include the original Bank of Commerce and the Loyal True Blue and Orange Home. In 1957, Richmond Hill Public School was renamed the M. Lillian McConaughey School in honour of a devoted teacher. Mary Lillian McConaughey was born in Richmond Hill in 1866, the daughter of Dr. and Mrs. James Langstaff. She taught her last class in 1948 at the age of 82. The building closed as a school on June 30th, 1979. In 1985, the property was designated under the Ontario Heritage Act for its architectural and historic significance. After renovation, it opened that same year as the M.L. McConaughey Senior Centre. In 1996, there was much controversy concerning the future of the building and the local seniors and others lobbied to save it. The battle was won and on January 27, 1998, after extensive renovations and upgrades, this Queen Anne revival style building reopened with facilities for social activities, physical fitness, hobby workshops, rooms for lectures and seminars, and even a dining room. Once again, the old building on Young Street is alive with activity and learning. The Cenotaph's curved design draws the eye away from Young Street and towards the M.L. McConaughey Centre. Many of those honoured in the Cenotaph received their early education in the school behind. The community now knows this building as the Richmond Hill Centre for the Performing Arts. However, historically it was built in 1897 to serve as Richmond Hill's third high school. Designed by architect J. Francis Brown and constructed by local mason John Kelly, with carpentry by L. Innes and Sons, it cost $5,000. The two-story red brick school displays dramatic medieval and gothic revival detailing in the high Victorian manner of the 1890s. 
Originally, there were separate entrances for the boys and girls as prescribed by society at the time. Richmond Hill was very pleased with its new high school. In the June 11, 1898 issue of the Liberal newspaper, the editor was nearly gushing when he wrote, Thursday, December 30th, 1897, will long be remembered in Richmond Hill. It saw the opening of a handsome new building, which, as a high school, is not surpassed by anything in the province. Richmond Hill moved its offices and council chambers into the building in 1932, where they stayed until the move to 225 East Beaver Creek Road in 1992. In the not-so-distant small-town days of Richmond Hill, the old high school also housed the public library, the fire hall wing, which was added in 1932, and the town lockup. Today, the Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts provides an attractive destination in the downtown core which enriches and entertains local, regional, and national audiences. Across the road from the McConaughey Schoolyard, Trench's Carriage Works was the largest and best known of Richmond Hill's 19th century industries. William Trench established a blacksmithing business on the site in 1857. He later expanded his operation to specialize in the manufacture of wagons, buggies, sleighs and other horse-drawn vehicles. When the arrival of the automobile heralded the end of the carriage-making industry, the buildings were converted to retail stores with apartments above. The taller portion of the building is the oldest section dating from 1878. The two-story section to the north was added as the business prospered in the 1880s. Envisioned as a military road from the town of York, now Toronto, to Holland Landing, Young Street served a more significant role in history, bringing settlers and commerce northward from York to newfound communities in the midst of what was then a vast wilderness. The original land grants were first cleared for farming, but by the early 19th century, some of the frontages were subdivided and sold for development of businesses, homes, and institutions creating the core of a new village. Although time has brought many changes to Richmond Hill's Main Street, some landmarks can still be seen that date back to the time when Young Street was a dirt road and the horse and buggy was the preferred means of transportation. Imagine yourself taking in the sights and sounds of Young Street in the era of lamplight. Village barber Moses Ransom offered a fine cut and shave from 1913 to 1930. No doubt many gentlemen debated their politics and the news of the day while awaiting their turn at the barber's chair. Mr. Ransom was responsible for ringing the village fire bell across the street at the Richmond Hill Public School when required. The Ransoms are among the community's oldest families and are commemorated in the name of Ransom Parkett. On July 24, 1980, Terry Fox ran up Young Street, right by this tiny little park tucked in between businesses just north of Major Mackenzie Drive. The first post office in Richmond Hill was established in January 6, 1836, under James Sinclair, who had a store on the east side of Young Street, just north of current Lorne Avenue. One of the best known postmasters was Matthew Teefy, and the post office was located in his home from 1850 to 1911, just north of the Richmond Hill Public School. The Savage family took over from Teefy in 1911 and moved the post office to north of Center Street on the west side of Young Street, where it operated until 1936. This would be the end of small, locally run post offices in the village. In 1935, the Dominion of Canada purchased Joseph Hall's former grocery store and residence at the corner of Young Street and Centre Street West. 
1936, a new brick post office for the village of Richmond Hill was constructed on the site, designed by the prominent architectural firm of 4C Page and Company. The cubic flat roof form of the building, octagonal accent windows on the north wall, and the geometric wall lights on either side of the Young Street entrance reflected a restrained Art Deco influence. Otherwise, the architectural details of the building are an adaption of the Georgian Revival and Edwardian classical styles of the 20th century. A larger new post office building was constructed on Arnold Crescent in 1960. In 2012, the building was fully restored to its original 1936 look. Richmond Hills Mill Pond has many moods. Sometimes it is pastoral and serene like on a summer morning when a light mist rises above the water and the resident ducks and Canadian geese fly the gently rippled surface. Other times, the mill pond resounds with the laughter of children playing in the park. On summer evenings, the gazebo is filled with music and the lawn populated with appreciative listeners. In the midst of winter comes the colorful activity of the winter carnival. But most of all, the mill pond is a place of natural beauty. But when it was first created in the mid 1830s, the mill pond was a place of industry and commerce. About 1835, John Langstaff and his son Miles built a dam at what became known as the Mill Street to harness the power of the watercourse. His purpose was to establish a sawmill for the processing of saw logs into lumber. The stored energy of the water held back in the mill pond was channeled through an artificial waterway known as Mill Race, which enhanced the flow and powered a giant water wheel. John Langstaff Jr. purchased his brother's holdings in 1847. In time, other industries joined the sawmill, including Wilson's Agricultural Implements Manufacturing, a foundry, a wagon works, and a distillery. All of the industries were located in the hollow south of Mill Street. A planing mill, which produced window sash, doors, and other wooden building components, was added by Andrew Mager in the early 1870s. The business continued until 1927, supplying the lumber and trimmings for many Richmond Hill buildings. For years, the old water wheel, no longer in use, quietly mouldered away in the gully just south of the Mill Street Dam and Bridge. There is so much more to explore with Museums of the Streets here in Richmond Hill. Don't forget to pick up your Museums of the Streets booklet at the Richmond Hill Heritage Centre. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery.